All right, guys, welcome to your second Android Views tutorial. So today we talked, or not today, last video, we talked about how views tie into the life cycle and how to make them appear faster by removing extraneous uh, or lengthy calls from create, start, and resume. So this video, we're going to talk about how views actually render and how they actually manage themselves on screen. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to mark my page. So how views actually render is the first thing a view does is our first thing activity does is it creates a, a system window okay so the system window is the area in which your views can be drawn and this depends on a couple of factors it depends on the status bar so if you're hiding or showing the status bar you might have more space there's the action bar so we could have a status bar here and an action bar here blah 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 okay they could be up at the top we don't know so all we know is that we're given a window. So what Android does is it parses your XML and it figures out what the views actually need to be in class-wise. So what we're going to do is, let's talk about inflation for a start, because that's more important before how we can have measures. The view inflator simply reads your XML file and creates your objects. That's all it does. It do and sets their properties. It does not draw, measure, or calculate anything at any point. So when you inflate a view, you're not actually inflating it into the hierarchy. What you're actually doing is you're telling Android to load the views into memory. So if you've got like, you know, a frame layout, we'll just say, with a view in the top right hand corner, is what your XML is describing. All you've actually done here, so here's our view. Here's our frame layout. All you've actually done here is tell uh, Android to create a frame layout class, a frame layout instance. Get a frame layout instance ready and populate it or set its properties based on the values in the XML. So all we've done is translate our XML into our frame layout. That's all we've managed to do. And that's really the point of it. And uh, that's all inflation does. It just creates your objects. So how does Android actually know this? Well, Android knows the structure of the view. It's called, this is called the view tree. So this, I will draw the view tree in a second, but this is our main system window. So that's always at the top of the tree is the system window. Okay, so that's our window. And it makes sense, it has to start somewhere. So we know our window. Then you have your root layout, and there's always one root layout in Android. Can't have multiple roots because it won't even compile like Android Studio or Eclipse, or whatever will yell at you. So just shove this up a little bit. Then your root layout has children, so we'll just say we'll, we'll say this is linear. And then if it, if it has children, it branches off. So we'll just say text, a button, and another linear. Okay, and then this linear layout, so this is another node. This linear layout might have more things, so it might have, um, you know, it might have another text. And another text. Okay, so here what we have now is we have a root layout, our linear layout here. And we have our linear layout inside of it. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is a measure pass. The measure pass is the more complicated of the two. Uh, what happens now is that the window basically says, at some point, the app's going to, the phone is going to say, I need you, or it's going to say, I need you to draw. So the activity is going to start figuring its stuff out. And it's going to request that the window layout, to the window to figure out the frame. So it says, it talks to this and asks the measure, it asks this view to measure with parameters. So it basically says, the window talks to our root. It says, I am this size, so I, I am, you know, 1920 by 1080 pixels. That's my Nexus 5, let's say. We're assuming, you know, full screen, obviously it's not exactly, actually it's 1080 by 1920, what am I talking about? That's portrait mode. Uh, I'm just assuming full screen. We'll say an S5, because that's the same resolution. So the root layout says, or the window says to the root layout, I am this size. You are allowed to fill me. 
and then the root layout basically has to figure out what to do from there. So the linear layout, a linear will then talk to each of its under layouts and say, it will say text view, okay, or text view. You have, it will it'll ask them first of all to, to measure says you have unlimited space, but you were capped to 1080 in width, okay? So it says you can be 1080 wide, but you are unspecified in the height department. So the text view goes, uh, the text view goes and figures itself out and then it reports back by saying set measured dimension. So this says, okay, I'm going to be 200 pixels high and that's what I want. I want 200 pixels of space. So the text view then sets the measured dimension and it goes to the root. The root goes, okay, that's fine. It then moves down to the next one and it asks the button. So this is the measure pass, it asks the button, you have 1080 pixels, how high do you want to be? And it goes, I would like to be 500 pixels high for some mad reason, just taking up half the screen. And then the, the root layer goes, okay, and reports back a set measure dimension and it says, okay, I'm ready for that. And this goes on. The, other, the only problem here is that if you have a linear layout, okay, in here, the root layer will ask it, how big do you want to be? But the linear layout does not know yet at this point. So the linear layout has to go in and ask its children, text, or my, my first text, how do you, or how big would you like to be? And it's like, okay, I want to be, um, you know, 1080 by 100. And it reports back. And then the other view has to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm 1080 by 5 by 100. And then the linear layout reports back, I need 1080 by 200 space because they're stacked underneath each other. We're assuming no paddings and margins, that's where it gets hideously complicated. And it reports back to our root layout. And that's the measure pass, guys. The measure pass needs to figure out how big the views need to be or how big things need to be. And the text views measure, you know, how much text they have, how much space they'll take based on sizes and stuff like that. And it gets kind of crazy. So that's basically the measure pass, guys. And as you can see, it flows down the tree recursively and you can do some neat stuff with measure passes. We'll get into actually coding this at some point. I'm just trying to explain how it actually functions and fits together first in the first few videos. Okay. So that's the next, that's this video guys, the measure pass. A uh, couple of gotchas to watch out for. Linear layouts have complicated measuring algorithms. So let's say you've got a text view here and this has weight one, okay? So this has a weight of one. What happens here is the linear layer goes, how big do you want to be? And the text view says, let's say you've set the text view's width though, not to wrap content, but to zero. It says, okay, I'm zero. And the linear layer goes, fine. It, it reports back instantly, I'm zero, done. That's good. But then the linear layer will spot the weight and goes, you want, you say you're zero, but you actually want to be dispersed. So the linear layer has to then figure out and figure out its algorithm. So it has to measure all these views again and it has to measure the views twice to calculate it. So your measure pass needs to be done as quickly as possible. And that's pretty much it. Uh, relative layouts, by the way, do two measure passes. So if you have a relative layer, let's say we've got you know, a relative and it's got three children. It has to measure every child twice, a relative layout, no matter what that's given. That's a guarantee. So a relative, and it has to measure three children. So let's say it's just T for text, T for text. And we have another relative. And then we have another two texts down here, okay? Basically, this relative layout goes, I need to figure out how big I'm going to be. I need to ask him to measure once, him to measure once, him to measure once. And then for the first measure pass, this has to report back its own height. So it goes, I need to measure you once, you once, and then measure you a second time. Good, we're good, we're on the same page. So that's one pass on these, and two passes in here for these lads, okay? Then the upper relative layout is only finished its first measure pass. So it needs, I need to figure this, I need to figure out some more rules. Let's lay out again. It asks these two to measure again, fair enough, another measure pass on each. It asks this relative layout to measure again, which causes these two to be measured two more times. So these are now being measured four times. And the text is actually quite a complicated class, even though it's very optimized. So what you're getting at here is that it's recursive. And of course, if you have another relative layout down here, 
this has been measured four times. And of course, if you have a text view in here, for each of those four measures, you have to do two measures, so you've got eight measure passes down here. And if before you know it, you're three relative layouts deep, and you've got five views in here, you've got 40 measure passes when you should only have five. So the general rule of thumb is never, ever, 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 ever nest relative layouts. And never nest linear layouts with weights. Relative layouts are great because you can expand your hierarchy very flat. You can make it, you know, very wide and flat. You can do nice tricks. Linear layouts are okay to nest, but don't nest them too deeply because, as you can see, this here needs to do layout, this here needs to do layout. Linear layout nest, more, the more view groups you nest, the more complicated and more co the layout stage and the measure stages and the figuring out gets. The more time it's going to take to do all the maths, the slower your view is going to respond. Uh, that's it for the measure pass, guys. Next time we're going to talk about the layout pass.